Welcome to Bath Talks with Jim Bruce. Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of Bath Talks. Today I'd like to talk to you about my Jewishness. Uh, I'm a Jewish man, uh, but I have not always been a Jewish man, as should be very obvious from my super Irish Scottish features that I wasn't born into a Jewish family. I was born into an Irish Swedish, Scottish, mixed family of ne'er-do-wells and uh, really entertaining Irishmen. Uh, by the way, if you can, get at least one Irishman in your family. They tell good stories. Um, this is how I became a Jew, and I thought it would be a fun thing to talk about. When I was a kid, we didn't go to church. My family didn't go to church. And I ended up going to church in a way that I have come to realize is very weird. I started to go to church when I was about five or six years old by my choice. I told my mom I was going to start going to church and I found a church to go to and it was a um, Baptist church and I found a group that would take me, would drive me there and I started to go to church on my own. I've come to find out that that's a very unique thing. Most kids don't go to church for any other reason than the fact that their parents make them. But for some reason, I really wanted to go to church. And so I started to go to church, and my, none of my par par parents went, and my siblings didn't go with me. It was just me going to church uh, every week because I was curious about the world I lived in. I wanted to know where I came from, and I had been told that baby religion had an answer. And I don't know why I needed to do that, but I just did. So I started to go to church as a little kid. But that also meant that I could decide not to go. So I went to church for a little while, and then I decided I'm not going to go to church anymore because I don't think I believe these things that these people believe. They were very nice to me, by the way, the people at the Baptist church. They were always very nice, and they were you know, very um, willing to share and teach. So it wasn't their fault. I just didn't agree with the things they had to say. That's all. Uh, so I stopped going to church. And it's a funny thing that I said to my mom, I'm going to go to church, and my mom said, okay. And then I said to my mom, I'm not going to go to that church anymore. And my mom said, okay. Uh, that's how much involved with my religious instruction my mom was. And by the way, if you're a parent, do that. I loved it. I love the fact that my mom let me make my own choices. Uh, I didn't love everything my parents did, but I sure did love the fact that they just let me do that. Uh, in high school, I decided I needed to go to church again. I felt like I was missing something. Uh, I was out of spiritual curiosity, so I started to go to a Methodist church. And again, nobody in my family was a Methodist. Nobody in my family was going. It was me on my own deciding I needed something. So I started to go. But I got really turned off by the Methodist church because there was this uh, Mormon girl who went to my church group and the other kids in the youth group would make fun of her for being a Mormon. They were kind of mean to her. And that turned me off of that church because I just thought, well, that doesn't feel like a very nice thing to do. And that doesn't feel like a very kind thing to do. And I always thought in my ideal vision of what religion should be is I've always thought religion should be kind. Now, of course, in practice, very few religions are kind. But it turned me off of Christianity again. And I turned away from that church and decided, well, maybe I'm an atheist. Because certainly... Atheism fits a lot of my worldview. I certainly see a fairly random, um, emotionless universe that I occupy. And as much as I want the universe to care about me, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I don't think the universe is angry with me, but I just don't think the universe particularly cares whether or not I'm here. Um, and so for a little while, I thought maybe I'm an atheist. And sometimes I think I am still. Uh, I've got to be honest with you that I'm not really anything other than curious. So... Uh, anything that I say absolutely is for convenience's sake. If I'm being honest about how my brain works, it's more just I'm really not sure about very much. The only thing I am sure is it would be nice if we were kinder to each other. Uh, so when I was in my 20s, I was more or less uh, curious, but would have considered myself either an agnostic or an atheist. And I still had room to talk to people who were religious, but at that point I would have thought, yeah, I'm not going to join your little club. I don't really want to be in your club. Uh, and then the internet was invented. I'm an old man, by the way. There was no internet when I was a kid. 
And one time, when I was on the internet, I would, I would debate people uh, be, about religion on the internet because I was naive to think that that was a useful way to spend my time. It's not, by the way. Nobody on the internet cares what you think. Uh, certainly not message boards. <laughs> if you want to go argue with people, just at the very least know that you're probably not going to change any minds. Um, maybe you will sometimes, but a lot of times you're just going to be spinning your wheels. Um, but I was in this message board and there was this guy who was a rabid anti-Semite. And he was saying a lot of ugly things about Jews. And uh, I did not know why he was there because that's not what the message board was for. And I was unfamiliar with trolling. I didn't know what it was. Um, but this guy said a lot of ugly things about Jews. And I found myself defending Judaism and saying, these things you're saying about Jews are not true. And I knew the things he was saying weren't true. Just the ugly, different, like, lies that people have told about Jews. For, <laughs> for as long as there's been Jews, there's been somebody lying about Jews. Uh, why? We could debate until the cows come home. But, and by the way, when the cows come home, there's a specific way you have to kill them if you want to eat them. <laughs> anyway, um, we could debate that all day long. But the bottom line is I knew he was wrong. I knew that he was misrepresenting Judaism, but I was also ill-equipped to defend Judaism because I didn't really know that much about Judaism. Um, so I felt uh, a little bit fraudulent in defending Judaism against this rapid anti-Semite because he at least knew what he believed. I knew he was wrong, but it's not enough to know that somebody's wrong. You have to actually then have the facts at your disposal to say this is why you're wrong. This is uh, the actual truth about what Jews believe. This is the actual truth about how Jews comport themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. And so what I did as a result of this terrible anti-Semite was I started to research what Jews actually believe. I decided to research what the religion says, how people practice Judaism, what the fundamental beliefs are. And the more that I did the research, the more I went, wow, I like this. A lot of this stuff makes sense to me. A lot of this stuff gives me an anchor for relating to the world around me. And I thought, you know what? I think I might be a Jew. This is great, I think. And so I had a friend at the time, who was still a friend, a good friend of mine named Jacob. A very Jewish name, by the way. And I said, Jacob, I think I want to become Jewish. And Jacob said, Ah, uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. And I found that very uh, upsetting. He, did, he, he didn't want me. Uh, it was, uh, it was my feelings were hurt. I was like, ah, all right, I, yeah, I guess. And then uh, later on I said to him, I said, uh, Jacob, seriously, I think I, I really want to try out Judaism. And he said, nah, you don't need to do that. You know, it's probably better if you don't. And again, I felt <laughs> insulted. But I was like, well, okay, I guess he knows better. I guess they don't want me. And then later on, I said, Jacob, seriously, I really like the idea of exploring Judaism. I think that this will fit who I am. I think I'm called to do this. And he said, all right, well, come with me to synagogue. And for those of you who are fairly educated Jews, you will recognize what Jacob was doing. Uh, for those of you who don't, it, it's pretty funny. You can look it up. Um, so I started to go to synagogue, and I started to uh, study, and I started to learn more about what Jews believe. I started keeping kosher, went through, there's a very long process of looking into Judaism and going from being a guy who's interested in Judaism to being a guy who is Jewish. But the long and the short of it is, eh, you know, sometimes people can do bad things and good things can accidentally happen. And I want to let that anti-Semite know, if he's watching this video, you accidentally created a new Jew. Ha, ha, ha! <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take a bath, and I'm going to keep the bubbles up so you don't have to see my circumcision. Thanks for listening. Bath Talks is a Jim Bruce production. Bubbles provided by Amori Arce. If you enjoyed Bath Talks, click subscribe.